Hello everybody, Julian from Julian Tech TM and today I'm at Same Lane Square. So what is the point of building another PC at the same price as the last build with almost the same parts? There are two things I want to cover in this video. One, to prove that it is still possible to get a good deal at Simlin Square. Two, I'll be upgrading one component, the storage, to be more specific, the NVMe SSD, to see if it's worth the upgrade. With that, I'd like to thank our sponsor for today, Western Digital. Because they provided us with the WD Black SN850 NVMe SSD that reads up to 7,000 megabytes per second with up to 1 million IOPS, IHOPS and the WDP50 external SSD that reads up to 2,000 megabytes per second that we can test and find out whether it's worth it. Pum, pum. With that, let's go back to Simlim Square to get the parts. Uh, take my wallet, my money shot. Today, I have $1,500 in cash to see if we still can build a PC under $1,500. Yeah, so the goal for this build is to build around this NVMe SSD, make it affordable. So because of the chip shortage, there are a lot of components that are out of stock. Not just GPU, but CPU, motherboard, RAM. So in my opinion, the best way to shop at Simlin Square is just give the shop a call to see if they have the parts you want so you don't have to waste time. You also can ask for the price and you get an idea of what is in stock and what is not. Hello boss. Hello. Sir. Yes. How are you? Very good. 9, 10, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Keep the change, huh? No lah! <laughs> Must make the cheapest PC. Okay, back home with the parts and since I already built a similar PC two weeks ago, I will just list out all the components quickly. I'll be upgrading the NVMe SSD from the last week's Gen 3 NVMe SSD to the WD SN850 NVMe SSD. I realized the store sold me a cheap PSU that can be quite problematic. So if you're following this build, I do recommend getting a better PSU more explanation down in the description below and in the comments too. But other than that, the short answer is you still can get a good deal at Simlim Square compared to online stocks, provided they have the stock. So I managed to get all these parts at $1,400 without the NVMe SSD. Compared to online prices that I search part by part, it will cost $1,564 without the NVMe SSD. $164 more. Buying all the parts from one store also makes sense because the store profits more and has more incentive to give you a package deal since you are purchasing a lot of components. Additionally, some stores sell their product based on supply and demand. So if the demand is low and the supply is high, the store may be able to give you a better deal. But more often than not, because of the silicon chip shortage, you probably find PC components at a higher price. That's why sometimes you find scalper price in Sydney Square. Sometimes it's good, sometimes it's bad. Now, on to the second part. Is upgrading your NVMe SSD from Gen 3 to Gen 4 worth it? First, we need to answer the question, what benefits do you get from upgrading storage? In essence, you get faster loading times for your application and software. Windows boot up speed will be very fast. But to keep it simple, I will tackle the main two benefits, which are file transfer speed and faster loading times in games. And you know what? I think we can test the file transfer speed now, and I also haven't tested it out yet. <laughs> Let's do it. Monitor on my right. I got it all prepared. An HDMI cable, power cable. Will it run? Of course it will. I already tested it out. Eh? All right. Oops. Get my cheap ass membrane keyboard. I actually got one keyboard I'm working on for video. Not sure if I should show you guys. <gasps> maybe I should, maybe I should. This is the keyboard I worked on. Stay tuned next week. I spent four days to make this. I promise the next following videos, the keyboard will be a lot better, okay? So here's the thing about data transfer. You have sequential data transfer, which is basically like a big file and has randomized transfer, like things like opening up applications or software. That's why I have two types of files or rather one file, one folder to transfer to the NVMe SSD. So let's put it in theory, okay? This external SSD has read speeds up to 2000 megabytes per second. And the NVMe SSD that I'm gonna transfer into here has read speeds up to 7000 and write speeds up to 5000 megabytes per second. So 2000 megabytes per second should be the bottleneck, right? Let's test it out. So if you can see here, I have here a video file that is 24 gigabytes. So let's put this 24 gig file into the NVMe SSD Gen 4. 
and what is the speed? 400 megabytes per second. Pretty fast, but not exactly the 200 megabytes per second that is promised, right? What if we put the file in the Gen 3 NVMe SSD? Exactly the same speed. So the simple answer is because of this USB limitations. Even though the SSD can go 2000 megabytes and the NVMe SSD can go 5000, 7000, USB 3 can only go up to 625 megabytes per second. Type C will go up to 1.2 gigabytes per second. There is, however, USB 3.2 Gen 2 times 2, which will be coming out and will have speeds up to 2 gigabytes per second. For faster loading times in games, I tested four different setup booting up from desktop to Shadow of the Tomb Raider's main menu and then loading a level. WD's Black SN850 Gen 4 NVMe SSD, WD Blue Gen 3 NVMe SSD, WD Black P50 External SSD, using Type-C cable on my main PC and a regular hard drive. And the results are pretty interesting. Booting up the game from desktop to the game mains menu, the WD Black Gen 4 NVMe SSD is the fastest. It took so long for the hard drive to catch up. <laughs> but when it comes to loading the game, the WD Black Gen 4 and the WD Blue Gen 3 load the exact same time. But you know what? The WD Black External SSD actually beats internal NVMe SSD Gen 3 and Gen 4 in loading times. Why? Well, I guess it's because of CPU bottleneck. The way games are loaded today because of how the transfer is received, it goes from storage device to your RAM, then to your CPU to decompress the data back to the RAM, then to the GPU, and then finally to your monitor. And although yes, CPUs are fast, but it's not fast in this aspect of computing. And I did say I run the WD Black external SSD on my main PC which runs on a 11900K and it helped with loading time. So like that, settle lah ho. Don't need get faster storage, just get a better CPU, right? Well, not quite. You see, Windows 11 is right around the corner and one of the features, direct storage, will solve this by eliminating the CPU from the data retrieval process I mentioned earlier. Instead of decompressing with the CPU, the data will move from RAM to the GPU's VRAM to the GPU chip to decompress. And you know what? This is already a thing with the Xbox Series X. And testing the WD Black NVMe SSD Gen 4 up against the Xbox Series X. For Gears of War 5, you can see the speech at which the Xbox Series X loads insanely fast. And I'm not sure if they will implement this, but Xbox Series X has a feature called Quick Resume, which is, as you kids say it, shee. <laughs> Am I doing this right? Oh man, I feel like a boomer. <laughs> what quick resume is, basically if you don't close your previous game, you can switch from game to game with very little loading time. So let's say you're killing locusts in Gears 5, but you have no interest. You want to you know, beat real people up in UFC 4, of course. But then, you lose. So you go back to Gears 5 to chainsaw more locusts. It's amazing. So in conclusion, there are few reasons for getting a Gen 4 NVMe SSD in mainstream use. But the potential is high. It will all depend on Windows 11 and what happens with direct storage. Is it worth the extra 50 to 100 bucks? Mm, not right now. But if you want the best of the best, the WD SN850 NVMe SSD has one of the best benchmark scores. So you will be ready for whatever the near future holds. Getting the WD Blue Gen 3 will be a great value today. And the WD Black P50 external SSD is also a great option. Actually, this little guy is pretty awesome. You can play games from SSD and get quick loading times. We've come a long way from taking a million years to load games from freaking hard drives. And I must say, it does look really, really good. But yes, once again, thank you so much Western Digital for sponsoring this video. The WD Black P50 game drive is also compatible with consoles. But do note, only the PS5 have USB Type-C. So for other consoles, the SSD performance will be limited by the console's port. What you can do with the P50 game drive is to expand the storage of your consoles. I'll talk specifically about the PS5. Because well, 
I have a PS5. Even though the PS5 has a respectable 825 gigabytes of storage, games these days can be as big as 100 gigabytes. So for the games that I don't play currently or don't play as often, I move them to the P50 game drive to free up storage. You can also play directly from the SSD, but the catch is PS5 games cannot be played directly from them. You have to move the PS5 games out of the SSD and into the PS5 in order to play it. But you can play PS4 games off the P50 game drive. If you want to learn more about their products, the links are in the description below. Other than that, I am done. It's freaking 6 a.m. and I'm done. <gasps> Woo! My birthday coming up soon and I'm working. Damn.